Welcome to my channel. Story 1 Stupid me fell for the whole thing, and I told her I was obviously her. But I could make things work if she truly wanted to as well. And she would have to earn my trust back. We had been together for over three years. She was my first serious relationship, and I loved her throatly. We were very close. Closer than I'd ever been to anyone before. We had started living together while going to college just shy of a year before everything went down. First night in our new place, we had a few friends over. We were drinking and having a good time. Nothing out of the ordinary. The next day my ex told me that one of the guys tried to kiss her but she pushed him off. And since there was a little alcohol involved I thought nothing of it. This guy had a reputation of cheating, being a hopeless flirt to any girl around, and just being a general D-Times. Fast forward about a week or so and the same guy was over the house again and pulled the same shit so I decided that was enough and made sure the guy didn't come around in a more. My ex insisted he initiated everything and even called him disgusting. I took her word for it because I had no reason not to. Eight months later and my ex and I end up at a party that he's at. Everything was cool. He didn't try anything and the night ended well. About a week later, one of my buddies brought the same guy over to our house to play poker without my knowing. We're all sitting around the table and he just kept tying my ex and half-heartedly flirting at her. But she wasn't playing along at all. Looking back at it, I should have knocked the kid's teeth out right there and been done with it. But I didn't. Never saw him again after that. Summer break rolled around and everything was completely normal. A few weeks into summer, we were out looking at the stars and she started talking about moving to all these different places. How much she hated being in the area we lived in. How she had regrets about not playing basket licking in college and how she wished she would have spent more time making friends. All this was pretty strange talk for her and completely out of the blue. And I jokingly said, you're not cheating on me are you which she obviously denied. From that point forward I had a really weird feeling in my gut. I started to notice changes in her demeanor. How we had less Cess times X in the previous months. Changes in the way she acted around me and the fact that she had stopped wearing a diamond necklace I had bought her. In mid-June we went to a music festival that we had gone to each of the previous three years. And by this point I had some pretty strong suspicions and couldn't shake the feeling even though I wanted to so badly. I asked her again in the parking lot at the festival if she was cheating on me and that I felt something was wrong and, again, she denied it. She assured me she would never do such a thing because she had been cheated on before and knew how horrible it was. A day after getting back home from the festival, the feeling was eating me alive and I needed answers. We were sleeping together and as I normally get up earlier than she does, I was able to sneak her phone out from under her pillow and check her text messages. She had a conversation with an unnamed number talking about how much fun they had last time they hung out they watched the movie Baywatch. I'll never watch that movie as long as I live. And he asked her what she wanted to do next time, etc. I didn't read anymore because I was ready to vomit as it was. I shook her awake and asked what the heck she was thinking, who was it, how long, why, everything that came to mind. She told me she had been seeing the same guy that was hitting on her months before. It had been about two weeks since they started seeing each other. He asked her out to a concert and she fully intended to tell me. Stupid me fell for the whole thing, and I told her I was obviously her. But I could make things work if she truly wanted to as well, and she would have to earn my trust back. 
In my defense, it was the first time I had ever experienced something like this and my emotions were flying high. My mind was going a million miles an hour and I was grasping for anything to calm the pain I was feeling at the moment. I felt extremely hurt and betrayed and never thought I'd have to deal with something like this. I was beside myself. We decided we should probably take a few days to think things over and talk when the emotions had calmed down. We were both set up to use find my friends and were following each other. We did this more out of curiosity when the feature became available about a year into our relationship. It wasn't a trust issue. So the following night, after the betrayal I felt, I just had to check where she was and her location showed her in the middle of a field and off went the red flags. I immediately called her. She didn't answer. I then called her mother who told me she was getting ice cream with one of her friends in the middle of a field. Yeah, right. I called her again and again and she didn't pick up until finally she did and told me she was busy doing laundry with her mom. I told her I knew she was lying and she hung up on me. I saw it. I got in my truck and drove to her house and found her in the bathroom with the door locked. She was in there for nearly 20 minutes doing God knows what before coming out and facing me. I asked her where she was and she told me she was with the same guy again. I asked her what else she was lying about and she said they had been together for about a month, not two weeks. I can't begin to explain what I felt at that moment. She was back with the very same guy. Not even 24 hours later after we agreed to try and work things out, I couldn't comprehend it. I put my job on her shoulder, looked her in the eyes, said, don't ever talk to me again, turned around and drove home. Cue the worst night of my life. There's some other things that took place after all this, but the question just asked for how I found out and I feel like I've been a little too elaborate as it is. Honestly, the lies and the betrayal were what hurt the most. I love this girl with all my heart and would have given her the sun, the moon and the stars, but life moves on, on to bigger and better things. Redditor 1 totally can feel your experience while reading. The thing that I learned from my extremely similar experience was that I don't know it all. When you are in the middle of a situation like that, you cannot think straight. Your mind or your eyes are blurry. Your judgment is way off. Only after shit hits the fan you realize how blind you were. That has helped me avoid getting into situations like that because I don't take chances like that anymore. It will probably happen again to me, but at least not as often. In my opinion, once a cheater, always a cheater if it's in the same relationship. There may be a tiny chance of the cheater changing, but that will only be after a long real breakup. Not a break. Not a cooling off period. Redditor 2. Luckily, you weren't married and spent 22 years with her. Believe me, it's worse. Story 2. Crabs. I was in the fourth year of what I thought was a monogamous relationship, and I got itchy. A little investigation revealed enough crabs to stock a bay. When I asked about it, he said, well, this guy at the bar, he was drunk, so I walked him home, and I didn't want to butt. Um, I sat on the bed, I didn't do anything, but they must have crawled up my leg. Um, romantic betrayal is so hard on some of us, because we can't understand it. You cut a square deal, that's what you do. Lying to a partner would undermine my self-respect. So I wouldn't do it. When I found out that my partner would and actually did lie to me, the shock was enormous. Bees could have been flying out of his ass Imsla and I wouldn't have been more stunned. We tried for another six years, but it was clear that he was incapable of honestly stating his wants and needs. 
I have no idea why. I don't think he does either. Redditor 1. Given that Jobing smoke up my ass is a euphemism for being lied to it might help calm the swarm. What a hilariously graphic picture for an unfunny situation. It sounds like you've gotten some distance from the event. Redditor 2. I was 42 when we broke up. I'm 58 now. That's a whole lot of distance. Unlike other heartbreaks, love gets a little funny in hindsight. He's the greatest guy, but he needs to lie about his D-times. Maybe it's his kink. He's trashed several relationships since me and is now presently having a plate smashing, cheek slapping, Facebook bashing, relationship with a much younger man. Good times. Redditor 3. Yeah, I've also found that often at the end of those situations I feel sad for myself, but with distance I feel sad for them. The distance of time somehow makes my own behavior easier to see with some objectivity too. I was never purposely an ass times low, but it sometimes came out naturally. Occasionally obstinate, right to a fault. Nothing overt, but definitely not as good as I would have liked to believe at the time. Redditor 4. Well, that's honest. I would imagine that the mental facility you demonstrate in hobbling bigots and diagnosing character might be a bit of a challenge in a romantic situation. You're scary smart. Scary smart can sometimes impede communication as well as strengthen it. I have always been drawn to men who know their way around language, but like anything else it comes with a price. The thought, you are winning this argument, but we are losing so much more, is a familiar one to me. Of course, I don't know you. But lack of information doesn't prevent me from forming lots of opinions. I'm no picnic. I'm distracted and self-centered and want a relationship to happen pretty much on my terms. Niall would cook dinner and place a plate in front of me like I was a prisoner. And in a sense I am a prisoner. A prisoner of my own obsessions. After days of this I would emerge from whatever project had consumed me to notice that I was living with someone and wonder who the duck that someone could be. He must have been lonely. Redditor 5. That's twice in two days, Greg, you've made me laugh. I had thought that excuses about getting SDDS from toilets, eats, and similar were indications of men that thought women were really gullible. I knew a woman that got that excuse from an 19 year old when she was 16 or 17. That's just sad and pathetic, really, especially for someone over the age of 20. I'm sorry that happened to you, but thanks for the story. Redditor 6. Crabs are not an STD, but they are disgusting. I unfortunately contracted crabs twice from non-sexual contact. Once I was visiting a wealthy friend in NYC. The faucets were gold-plated, but the monogram towels were infested with crabs. I was scratching for weeks before a clinic doctor set me straight on the origins of my itchy organ. The second time was inft. Lauderdale. A few hours after trying on a swimming suit, I got the itches. This time I knew exactly what to look for. It's funny lol because I haven't contracted crabs from S times actual activity, at least not yet. Thank you for watching. Comment what do you think about this situation. Don't forget to like and subscribe.